Council last year, many folks in this room were there walking. Linda, many others were out walking door to door, helping you walk, walking door to door, helping me. And we made a big impact in St. Pete. Uh, since that time, I've uh, beat the city in a First Amendment uh, lawsuit in the court. Farmers Market uh, at Founders Corner, where I have them for the 62nd with some bureaucratic nonsense, and uh, they're a little bit uh, on the ropes. The press is picking that story up too. So keep fighting for freedom, and remember, in all the doom and gloom we've heard, God is with us. God is great. God wants peace, and if we keep that in mind and keep our heads and set the example of peace and love. And he we said, prevail. And he said, subdue the earth, not let it subdue you. So we have to do something, not go. sit on our butt. We do, and well, we're going to do it peacefully because that's the way to freedom. So I'm going to talk about No Tax for Tracks, the group I'm with, so many artists. T-shirt people have been out waving tonight. And what we're trying to do is stop a rail boondoggle and a massive tax hike. And I'm going to pass around this pad. And this pad is a sign-up list, and I'm going to keep putting this slide up many times tonight because we need your help. We have to get people to do simple things like come to our headquarters and make phone calls, or take a phone list and make phone calls, walk door to door, sign wave, donate a few bucks a month if you've got it, because that's the only way we're going to win. I, I like this slide because what we're dealing with is what I like to call really greed line. It's a green light Pinellas, but this thing is just really a big corporate cronyism uh, model where they're going to tax the poor and the middle class and they're going to transfer it through the government, beat them off into the pockets of the rich and well connected. And along the way, they're going to happen to build a train, but a lot of people are going to get very rich. Now, uh, <clears throat> what this is, is a 14% rate hike to our sales tax. It's a 300% revenue hike for all the tax money taken in by PSTA, the local transit authority. And it will make Pinellas the highest sales tax in the entire state at 8%. Nowhere else will the tax be this high except in Pinellas County if people vote for this in November, on November 4th. And what do they want to build? The big money from this is going to build a train from St. Pete to Clearwater, downtown St. Pete to downtown Clearwater. On the news last night, they misspoke and said it's going to the beach. It's not going to Clearwater Beach. It's just going downtown. There's no train to Tampa. There's no link across the way. Even if there was, I wouldn't support it. But a lot of people think there's a lake. They like to put it on their map. But there is no link to Tampa. Uh, and this is the Pinellas sales tax forecast on the Greenlight Pinellas. Right now, the total tax money they take in through property taxes is about $30 million. The first year, which is a partial year of tax collections, will be 130. The first full year, 148 million dollars in new in tax money coming into PSTA, not a lot. And they project it's going to go up three percent every year. So in 2026, it's 193 million dollars. That's from a government agency that started with a tax revenue budget of 30 million. Of course, they get about twice that total by grants and other uh, funding money. All right, they're massively enlarging. And what do they do with all this money? They're going to build more empty buses. They promise, they promise although it won't deliver, a 65% increase in buses and more frequent buses. They'll build a massive bloated bureaucracy. They'll make it even bigger. And it's all going to end up in the pockets of very well-connected fat cats. And I'll explain all of this in a minute. There's a lot of, green, there's a lot of myths out there about Greenlight Pinellas. Uh, one is that when they use $800,000 in taxpayer money, for an education campaign that is really just all about informing the voters. But it really is, which is what they've done. They've taken $800,000 out of the budget, tax money, and they've used it on you know, pins and flyers and TV commercials and bus ads. And they say, Greenlight Pinellas is wonderful and we're going to educate you about it. They don't tell you about all these things I'm telling you. That's taxpayer paid for propaganda. Here's one. They say, Greenlight Pinellas will expand bus service 65%. There's no obligation in the Greenlight Pinellas plan to expand bus service. Um, in fact, the consultant hired, Ernst & Young, which is the same consultant that shepherded in the Charlotte, uh, North Carolina rail boondoggle, they said the amount of bus service increased their implementation schedule could be refined in response to substantial revenue shortfalls or cost overruns. And we know these things 
always have revenue shortfalls, they always have cost overruns. In fact, the money they bring in from this massive tax hike is only enough to pay for 50% of the train. They're going to have to hope they get money from a completely broke federal government to build the rest of the train and from state grants. So they're not going to expand bus service. The bus service will be cannibalized. In LA, uh, poor neighborhoods had to sue the city over an issue called transit apartheid when they took money from poor neighborhoods out of the bus service and put it into the train service. Here's a, another myth. Rail's a big success in cities like Charlotte, they mentioned Portland and all that. I don't have time to blow apart all these myths. Charlotte built about 1.6 of the five lines they promised, and then they ran out of money. They ran out of money after raising their sales tax, and now they're all scrambling. We'll get, we can't ask the voters to raise sales tax again. How, how can we sneak in another tax hike? How can we get it found? They, they don't know how to do it. And oh, by the way, who, who ran uh, that issue in Charlotte? Brad Miller, the current CEO of uh, PSTA. He was in charge of the uh, Charlotte Lines there. And here he is, Mr. Brad Miller right up here, CEO. He's not really, I guess, a bad guy. He's a typical government bureaucrat. The guy who, who says we're going to get a half million dollar federal grant from the Department of Homeland Security, which it just did, that's designed for anti-terrorism ads. This was reported on WTSP by Mike Deason this week after I published it on my blog, The Sunbeam Times. We're going to take that half million dollar grant that's designed to stop bus bombings. You know, report that suspicious package. What's that empty backpack doing there? Call the authorities. We're going to have an ad on TV to tell you how to do that. That's not what the ad did. The ad said, hi, meet Sheila. She's a typical college student. She loves the bus. Hi, this is Hank and Marge. They like going to the beach on the bus. And here's Larry, your friendly bus driver. Learn more at Greenlight Pinellas, paid for by American Department of Homeland Security. <laughs> and he said this is completely appropriate. These are the people that ask us to trust them with our tax dollars. All right, so I hope you go to my blog, sunbeamtimes.com, if you want to read more about that story. Uh, here's another one. Building light rail will decrease congestion. That's false. I'll show you a slide on that in a minute. Congestion gets worse. Traffic gets slower. Building rail and expanding bus service will promote economic <laughs> development. This is one of the big ones they like. Oh, we're, we, we're never going to grow. We can never build enough roads, which, of course, is baloney. Um, and we're going to attract all these wonderful businesses if we just had a train that connected St. Pete and Clearwater. St. Pete and Clearwater is going to attract who? Who's going to come here for that? All right. Oh, well, the college students will move. Really? Well, my, my college student kid wants a car. Okay. My, my teenage girl wants a car too. All right. But you don't have to ask me. Let's look at the supporters, Cerebro, or Severo and Seskin. They did a paid for study for the Federal Transit Administration, and they are hardcore liberal rail supporters at Berkeley. They're Berkeley professors. And they concluded in this, in this study, urban rail transit investments rarely create new growth. They put the, they put the uh, quotes on there. But more typically, redistribute growth that would have taken place without the investment. In other words, it's just a big slush fund. It's a big crony corporatist slush fund. That's all it is. And uh, so in the Bradenton Times of 2010, when Hillsborough uh, was trying to do their tax saying was defeated, they, the Bradenton Times reported that the $1.7 million contributed to the yes side of that vote came from all these rich land developers and like, and that's exactly what's happening here. So it's only not, it's not real economic development, it's about redistributing money from the pockets of the poor and middle class to the pockets of the rich and the well-connected. Here's another myth that there's widespread support for raising taxes. This is baloney. Every poll on their side is manipulated. It doesn't, it's not the voters, it's the people outside the voting population of Pinellas County, and their numbers are all massaged. I did a poll, pure, straightforward poll, 61% of people in this county oppose raising taxes 14% to build a train. We'll see what we do on election day. We have a lot of work to do. So here's, a, here's something on congestion. I took data from uh, Texas A&M Transportation Institute and the American Public Transportation Association and compared freeway speeds in cities our size with trains to freeway and also main arterial speeds to cities our size without trains. And guess what? If you don't have rail, your cars move faster. In other words, congestion is less. All right, your average speeds are 57.3 miles per hour higher uh, on the highways. Now, that's not a big difference, but the point is, the promise is, you build the train, 
congestion goes down. No, congestion does not go down. At best, it's the same. But you're not going to help with congestion. In fact, when you take lanes away, put trains on them, when you take money away from roads, your congestion gets worse for cars. Just go to any city with a train and drive on the highway next to the train like I do in Chicago once a year. I watch the empty train whiz by all the stopped cars on the interstate. All right. Now, oh, public service announcement. This yellow pack going around the room. I would like you please put your name on it and your email address and your phone number because we need your help to walk, to wave signs, to make phone calls, and to donate a few bucks a month if you can so we can win. All right, back to the presentation. PSTA is going to run out of money. This is an if without a revenue hike. The fact is that PSTA has been abusing their money for years. Instead of managing the budget properly, they chose to dip into reserve funds, but they could just as easily have cut spending. They gave raises to their government worker and their bus drivers when the rest of us in the economy are suffering without jobs or getting pay cuts. They get raises. Here's a, their tax uh, thing. I'm not going to get into all the money. The fact is they're flush with cash. They just don't spend it properly as with all government agencies. In fact, when they started getting all excess money from property tax revenue during the big housing bubble, you know, all the government sucked in all that money off the property tax fake values. They said, well, we need a new facility. So they built a $40 million Taj Mahal facility, you know, to have for their, their offices. And by the way, have you noticed that the buses? Yes. All right, there's lots of empty buses out there. Sure, there's a lot of full buses, but there's lots of empty buses. Why are we building a system or trying to get more money to a system that can't even come close to filling the buses it has? Here's their own study. This is a PSTA study showing that 46% <coughs> of ridership is on five routes. Look at these routes. There almost no one's here. In fact, their own study said, get rid of those routes. They're not getting rid of those routes. They're going to double and triple down and add more buses that can also be empty. So what's your big plan? Well, it's Green Line Pinellas, a fancy campaign designed to trick voters into voting for the future and the young and a green economy and, you know, all the sort of uh, grown vibes you hear. It's going to be a train. They call it a train. Thank you. It's really just a glorified streetcar. <coughs> it's going to ride on the surface streets. It's not going to be elevated like in Chicago. It's not going to be a monorail like a Disney World. It's sitting on the streets. Some of it does run down the middle of 275, but a lot of it sits right in the streets. And I'll show you that in a minute. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> wow that, that's like a water show and a lecture. <laughs> you don't even have to pay extra for that. Thank you. I'll be here all night. Thank you. No, that works. It's all like that. I'll try not to slip and break my neck. Okay. Now, they say that this is mainly about expanding bus service. All those naysayers, all those crazy, all those tea party people, and those, those people, okay? Well, they want to say it's about the trains. The train the train doesn't even matter. It's about the buses. Well, here's the fact. $2.5 billion train with $1.35 billion from sales tax. You notice they don't have enough money to build the train. Most of the money is going to the train. The Huge amount of money from this is going to the train. $110 million of buying new buses. And on top of this, we've got to have new debt. $148 million in interest alone over 35 years because they're going to take out a big loan against future tax revenues to pay for the train they can't afford. Uh, this is just classic, you know, you know, show game stuff. 41 intersections will have a train going right through it. All right, you can just imagine you're sitting on East Bay Drive, driving along, or you're on Keene or a road. This is what you're going to see crossing you. There's no, there's no uh, gates coming down. No. If you're driving alongside the train, there's, there's no way to just drive across and turn without being sure you're not going to hit the train. In fact, in Houston, they've had a massive number of car wrecks. Go to sunbeamtimes.com, right on the top, it talks about the Houston car wrecks. Just, you know, like every month or two. We've got a car getting hit by a train on the surface street. That's what we're going to have here. Here's some congestion from the train. Um, light rail, you know, they like to talk about subsidies. You, you hear these counter arguments. Well, the roads are subsidized. You want to get rid of the roads, you crazy anti-government people? You want to get rid of the roads? What are you, nuts? All right. Well, the, the roads are subsidized, but they cost you know far less than the trains to subsidize. Here's the thing. 
Um, we have uh, cost per rider, I believe, dollars per passenger mile, a dollar eighty on the train versus about uh, fifteen cents at most. Um, I'm sorry, about 20, 20 cents for the uh, roads. Okay, that's how much you subsidize people. All right. You go to a game on, in Minneapolis on their Tampa Tonka line or whatever they call it, it's 25 bucks subsidy money for each rider to go along that public route in Minneapolis to the game. Okay, well, here's the song. Okay, if you haven't signed up, okay, we need your help. Please sign up, walk, call, sign away, donate, put your name on that pad, okay? All right, here's the other thing you want to do bus rapid transit. A train, I'm fine, a train that's going to go, I mean, buses that are articulated, you know, like two-car buses, they're going to take up a lane, in this case on 4th Street, and there's going to be several of them, and they're going to be uh, getting preference on the traffic signals. The big, ugly buses come in, everyone crossing, that's it, you stop. We're, we're crossing, okay, they get prefer preference. That's going to increase congestion, and it's going to cause crowding. This is showing 4th Street. In this particular section, there's only four lanes, and they're going to put these extra buses on them on one of the lanes. So you really got a two-lane road from about 30th Avenue North down into downtown. It's going to get pretty congested on a major busy thoroughfare there. Okay, so you're going to take away parking. Okay, 50 to 100 percent of parking in downtown St. Pete is gone. On First Avenue North, they lose half their parking. First Avenue South, they lose all their street parking. It's just gone. Um, that's just illustrating that. Um, oh, 62nd Avenue North, right down the middle. They come off the interstate at 275. They turn, and by the way, somehow they're going to execute this turn with their train. I just talked to a train engineer tonight. <laughs> he was laughing. So it takes a quarter mile to turn like that, okay? That's not going to happen. All right, there's another 90 degree turn I'll show you in a minute. Okay, they're going to come off, and they're going to go right down the middle of um, 62nd Avenue, they're going to eminent domain all this, okay, these red lines, that's, that's what they're going to have to take a look, right through the fronts of these houses, okay, right here, through the front. businesses are all gone, they're talking to these businesses, they're gone, goodbye, and they're going to throw a train right down the middle of that, and I think they're throwing a bike lane in there too, <laughs> all right, and, um, and it's going to curl around and go down 19, that H&R trains, with the big sign that says H&R trains, welcome to Train tracks right down the middle of that. Okay, go talk to that owner. Um, apartment buildings. Let's see where is it? Where are the apartment buildings that are gone? Uh, well, they're just gone. <laughs> that, they're so gone I can't even see them for some reason. Oh, it's the next slide. That's why. Okay, so right here. This is going. Here's that 90 degree right angle turn. Okay, that can't happen. So right there, red line. Those apartment buildings just gotta go. But there's a reason why the head of the apartment builders, uh, construction owners, whatever, apartment owners association is on board. Hey, subsidize money to build new apartment buildings. All right. East Bay Drive. I drove this today. You know, you've got like two lane car turn lanes. They're gone. Trains down there. So you're just going to go right down the middle of East Bay. By the way, there will be bike lanes. So you've got a bike lane, three lanes of cars. Train, train, three lanes of cars, bike lane. Can you imagine that on East Bay, a bike lane on East Bay with a train and no turn lanes for your cars? There's going to be dead people everywhere. <laughs> the trauma center is going to be busy, I'll tell you that. Okay? Here it is, right at Look at that, eminent domain. All right, to take away this parking. All right, to get close to that front entrance to that store. All right. <clears throat> Uh, use of public transportation is incredibly low. 1.6% are, are uh, using transportation. Um, oh, we need your help. If you haven't signed up, there's a yellow pad going around the room. I don't know if I mentioned it. Please put your name and number. Where is you wear signs, make phone calls. Okay. Duke Energy gave $50,000. Uh, after um, they gave us a 7% rate hike on the electric bill, they, they gave $50,000 to bring my bills. Why? The train runs on electricity. Yay, we get to buy electricity from them, and they get to make money off of that. Here's one. Uh, green light's based on the false premise that we're going to have 200,000 more people coming to Pinellas. We better get ready for the choo-choo train. 19th century technology. All right. Um, this is what the uh, Florida Demographic Estimating Conference of a bunch of good muckety-mucks from UF and others are saying. 
Hillsborough is going to go up. Pinellas stays flat to 2040. There are 200,000 people coming here. In fact, Pinellas County is losing residents in part because of the high tax problems we have. We just don't need two public transit systems. We just need a bus system. We need to have smaller, more nimble buses. These cost 144,000 bucks versus the hybrid ones, which are 650,000 and they're green. That's why they cost extra. And you need to have, you know, technology with apps and scheduling software. So you say, look, we're here. Maybe the bus can come where we are. You know, things like that. This can be done. It just takes some innovation. In fact, it might help if you brought the private sector in, gave them all the money, and said, go do this, deliver. All right, if you want to keep like 10 bureaucrats on board, okay, that's a reasonable trade-off. By the way, there's going to be a, a huge expressway, Jeff Brandis just announced, huge expressway being built to get cars moving faster past all these areas. And by the way, the US-19 massive construction project for in perpetuity will be finished one day. I just drove a big part of it that is uh, done, and that was slick and fast. Of course, the other part of it was painful, but that is pretty fast, okay? Cars can move fast. Now, we recommend, I'm almost done here, we recommend the no new revenue scenario. There is a way to do this without giving them new money, and it's called the PSTA no new revenue scenario, which basically says live within your means, tighten your belt like the rest of us. What we don't like to see are there's pictures like this in the paper. Okay, this is a mom and her baby and her daughter out in the cold waiting for the bus. This is what they've already produced. Now, when you've got people wasting terrorism money for feel-good ads, do you trust them to produce anything better than this in the future? Because I sure don't. Wait, I thought it was global warming. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is smarter. Well, this is this cold was caused by global warming in Neanderthal. Oh, come on. <laughs> all right. So, look, we need your help. All right. This is the biggest political issue in the county for the next for this year, and if it passes, it will dominate everything for the next several decades. Everything that happens in this county, if Greenlight passes, everything will be in service of transit-oriented development. Can you say Agenda 21? Okay. We'll be in service of making sure the train is built, making sure we expand more train tracks, making sure we pay for buses we thought we were going to deliver, more taxes, everything. If we don't kill this sucker, this is what the regime we're going to live under for the next several decades. All these battles will all go well. We have made the investment. We got to support it. All right. So we need your help to stop it now. Do sign up and don't think that we can't win. In Tampa, the yes side had 1.7 million dollars on their side. The no side had 20 thousand dollars on their side. They won. 58 percent got the no. 12 cents per vote to lose, or 12 cents to vote to defeat it versus $12 a vote to lose. Now we're going to need more money here. Our budget is bigger now. It needs to get bigger. We think we need to get about $150,000. So if you can donate, you donate. All right, every dollar helps. All right, five bucks a month, 10 bucks a month. But more importantly, your boots on the ground, knocking on doors, passing out literature, walking precincts, this is critical. All right, making phone calls from a call center, getting us set up at events like this, that makes a big difference. We need your help. So please go to notaxfortracks.com, join us. And I already said that already, okay? Thank you very much. <laughs> Call. It's a trial. They, they call.